out there. Today, we're training a doodle. And it's kind of a, it's kind of a, a weird, weird thing here because um, here's the thing. We have with us today, Mike and Samantha and Paul. How cute is Paul? So, you know, if you have a golden retriever and we're COVID protocol, so when I'm talking around Mike and Samantha, um, I'll be wearing my mask, but to talk to you, I'm just dropping it. If you have a golden retriever crossed with a poodle, what's it called? Everybody in the chat? Do you know what it's called? Of course. It's called a golden doodle. If you have a Labrador retriever crossed with a poodle, it's called? Yeah, it's called a Labradoodle. And likewise, we have our burner doodles, we have our border doodles, there's all kinds of doodles. Yet, when we, like Paul, we cross a Cocker Spaniel with a poodle, it's not a cockadoodle. I guess that would make it a rooster. So officially, uh, we have a cockapoo, but then we decided that golden poos <laughs> sounded a little bit too formal. So, so um, Mike is a first time dog owner. Samantha has owned dogs before, but um, so there's a lot of things I thought, this is a great opportunity. I've known Mike for a, a number of years. And I said, when I heard he had a puppy, I said, why don't you come uh, up to my place and I'll do some training with you because there's a lot of things that we need to know. So I'll show you the list of things that I have planned to talk about. If there's other things you'd like to talk about, you can leave it in the chat. We're talking treats, clicker, brush, leash, play, biting, and in, oh, that should be intros. The dyslexic girl forgot there are. Just pretend there's an R right there and it's intros. So we're gonna start right off because I'm gonna have a little assignment. Now, you guys brought some treats with you, right? Okay, so these are the treats. And I'll just uh, tip this down if I can. Hold on. You can hold that for me, Samantha. Okay, so, so this is his, um, his meal, right? Mm -hmm. And so those are good to use when, uh, if you've listened to my podcast on uh, the value of your rewards, that's a great thing to use at home. Um, it's nice and small. So for a little dog, it's not a bad thing. However, the higher the distraction, the higher the need for value, all right? And so I anticipated that we might need some rewards. So I have some rewards and I'm just gonna throw them to you guys and you guys tell me what ones, so what we've got here, these are duck sticks. So why wouldn't I use that for training? Well, obviously it's too big. But when you break it up, these break really easy. My dogs love these. Um, you can't really get it small. And you've got to respect with a little dog, why do we want small treats? Well, the obvious is it fills them up too fast. But the less obvious is big treats take a long time to swallow when you're a little dog. I want training to go fast. And so we want to have little treats for our little dog. So um, I have, these are, these break really easy. These are, uh, I almost hesitate to call because the, the, I almost put the business uh, into bankruptcy because they had so many people contacting the morning rewards. But these are called honey beefers. They're from the Nova Scotia. And now they can't, they're not even shipping anywhere outside of Nova Scotia because they got so overwhelmed with business. But these break really small, but maybe not small enough. So I also have tripe treats. But see the size of that? Even that is too big for my dogs. I would cut that into quarters. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna give Mike a little job or Samantha a little job because Mike's holding the puppy. When we're training today, we might use a few of these and mix in with the really good treats so that we start to transfer value from low value treats to high value treats. So I've got a cutting board here and I'm going to give Samantha, the cutting board. I'm gonna just put my mask on. So you're gonna cut up some of these into like, I would cut them this way and then cut them in quarters. Okay. And then underneath here is some roast beef. This roast beef, that's the size that I would use for my border collies. So I would cut that quite a bit smaller because small puppies 
We want small treats, all right? I, I find that, I mean, a lot of people come with these big honking meatballs for their dogs, and um, it's just way too big, guys. It's way too big, all right? So while Paul is hanging out there, a lot of dogs will end up kind of nibbling on your fingers, right? So what I want to do is I want to avoid that from happening. So I've just got, this is a West Paw rubber toy, and this is the sort of thing I would give to a puppy because as much as they would love uh, bones, their teeth aren't ready for bones yet. So these are the sort of thing, and if they're teething, you can put these in the freezer. Another thing you can do, this is a, a West Paul topple, and I've just filled it with raw food and some treats. So I'm not gonna give that to Paul right now because that would like that's probably his daily rations, but that's what I would use with my puppies, my border collies. Okay, so you can just hang on to that, Mike. And if he wants to chew on something rather than chewing on your fingers, he's gonna chew on that. Okay, so next thing I wanna talk about is a clicker, and I have to go and retrieve one. So I will just uh, go off camera. Okay. I actually, I actually have a box of clickers here and all clickers make different sounds and you want to be, now I've got a little video clip of Paul coming into the house for the first time and he walked in, the dogs were barking and if you know you have a puppy visiting your home, make sure your other dogs are put away so that they don't overwhelm the puppy. Just being in a new place, especially when my puppies are bark or my dogs are barking, could be overwhelming. So some of these clickers are quite loud. So that one is super loud. And some of them are a little quieter. So I'm gonna take a quiet one. Has he ever heard a clicker before? No. Awesome. So never heard a clicker before. So what we're gonna do is I'm going to, you can just grab, a, uh, a, so you're going to. Oh, I'm not going to. Yeah, that's okay. Okay, okay. good. We can just, so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to tip this down so you guys can see. While I'm talking, I'm going to click near you. And then, so Paul doesn't understand what the clicker means, but I noticed when I clicked them, it didn't startle him. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, while I'm talking to you, I'm going to every now and again, I'm just going to click that clicker and see if his head comes up. He heard the word clicker, he's kind of smart. Do you see that? He already started whipping his head after one click. Now the mistake people make when they introduce a clicker is, well, there's a, a number of things, but some people like to use it like a remote control, click, click, you really, Ideally, there's no motion from you. The puppy doesn't see your hand moving because dogs, because of their ancestry, they follow on motion fast, right? What was that? And so we want them to, un to understand we're pairing the sound. So I'm not even gonna look at him. I'm just going to and see if, so he didn't turn on that one. So I wanted to see if my looking at him had anything to do with him. I'll just mix in some other treats. You can keep cutting. Okay. Um, so you want them to hear the sound and do the, and give the cookie. Now a lot of people go click treat, click 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 click, and just kind of rapid fire click treat, click treat. But when you do that, the dog doesn't know when the clicker started and the treat began. And if you did this cookie treat click cookie click, the dog would never learn what the importance of the sound is. We want them to learn. When you hear a clicker, it means something amazing is gonna happen. So I would never click without delivering a reward and I would never give the reward or even motion with the reward before the click because that motion is what we call poisoning the sound of the clicker. Okay, so I'm going to just go routinely through life here. And the next thing that a dog, any kind of doodle, you wanna introduce this really early and that is your grooming brush. Do you guys have a brush for him? Yes. Perfect. So I picked up this brush just at um, the local pet store and it's what you want for doodles is they've got really soft coats and you want to get, generally speaking, I guess it depends on what they're crossed with. Is there terrier doodles? Terrier doodles. 
I bet there, I bet there is like, um, I bet there's like little, is there a Scotty doodle? They call that a Scotty poo, right? So this is, ideally we're gonna graduate to a, do you, do you have a wire slicker for him? No. Okay, so this is a slicker brush, and this is what I would recommend for soft-coated dogs. But this one I've never seen before, and I thought, what a great way to introduce to a puppy. It's a really soft wire. There's little, you can see there's little ball, balls on the end of that. I have never seen a slicker like this before, but this is the perfect thing to introduce your puppy to, um, to grooming. And so we would like the puppy to love this, so what we're going to do is we're just going to show him that, click, and then feed him. And he's going to go, oh my gosh, what is that? It means cookies are coming. I love that. So we want to just, as I'm talking to you guys, I'm going to boom, click. Saw his little ear, just move a little bit there on the click. We want them, just the sight. That's all we're going to do. The sight is amazing because too many dogs fight with their owners to be, when they, when it comes to time for grooming, they don't want to be groomed. All right. So Organically, I'm just going to show. So good things happen when that brush is presented, right? If you see that brush, something amazing is about to happen. All right, next thing I wanna talk about, and that is the style of the leash that you choose. So here we go, I'm just going to, yeah, I know what that brush means. The brush is exciting stuff. So can I just unclip him? Let me take a look at the leash you got. So this is a fantastic leash for a 60 pound Labrador retriever. <laughs> this is not a fantastic leash for a three pound doodle. If that. If that, this, this probably weighs the same weight as his skull. All right, imagine carrying around something the same weight as your skull because once this is clicked on to me, uh, I gotta carry both things, all right? And so this is not a great leash for a puppy. Look for the smallest size clip you can use. Now, I would keep this leash for nighttime, nighttime potties. So if the puppy wakes me up, and he's got to go potty in the middle of the night, you pull out this leash. So this can stay in the bed stand, but you're never going to need to use it again for the rest of his life. All right. So wh why I like these leash, these clips for bed, for uh, bedtime potties is I can wake up and just clip this around the entire collar. I don't have to like take a tiny, tiny little clip and look for a tiny, tiny little hook hook on the leash, on the collar. Now, Mike and Samantha are much older than, or younger than me, so it might not be as hard for them to find that eyelid, but this takes care of that problem, right? You wake up, boom, slip that on. So this is your, going to be your nighttime potty leash from now on. The other thing is it's, it's super wide and um, you don't need something that wide. So this is a nice thin leash. So again, it's light, light clip. I personally, even though I am a vegan, I do like leather for dogs. The only challenge with this is you can't let the puppy or the dog learn to chew on that or it's a short le le leather leash, all right? So why do I like this? Now, for a guy this size, nylon is just fine. But why I like this is if you have a bigger puppy that's more rambunctious and might lunge, the nylon will burn on your hands. So the, this is super soft. So this is my gift for Paul. Oh, it's a proper you. size leash. You can just clip that right on him. Okay. So we talk brush, we talk leash, we talk treat size, we talk clicker. Now let's talk play. Does he have toys that he plays with at home? Oh, yes. And what do they look like? We have uh, the rubber tie knot with a plat, or sorry, the rope tie knot yeah. toy with a rubber hard bit in the middle that cool. he likes for teething. He's got a plastic disc. He has a lot of stuffies okay, that good. have the soft side and the harder side. Okay, good. So those are all sound ideal for him, especially to get enter entertain himself. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to interactive toys that will that we want the dog to play with us, these are the sorts of toys that I like. Um, so this one had a squeaky in it. I don't think it's still alive. Mm -hmm. Okay. So why I like this, it's got a bungee. So great for my shoulder and great for the puppy's neck. 
Um, it, it's got, some dogs really love these holy rollers, mm -hmm. right? It's got a holy roller in there and it did have a squeaky, which I can just slip another one in there. Um, this one, it's got everything. It's got, this is sheepskin. It's got a, a soft holy roller like thing on the end and it's also got a, 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 a bungee. This one, just sheepskin with a bungee. So I'm guessing he'll love that one. And this is a long one. I like this sort of length for recalls. So this has actually got, um, I think that they, they take old fur coats oh, and they smart. cut them up and they, they braid them into a toy. So you can just go to the fabric store and get some fleece mm -hmm. and braid. This is one of those square braids, right? So pretty. Um, so a nice long one so that you, the puppy can chase this. This is great to introduce the dogs for really lightning fast recalls, all right? So choosing the right toy for the puppy is super important. And we're going to get to that in a second. I just want to do one more thing because what might happen when we're playing, biting might happen. Okay, so here's, there's a few rules of play. Number one, I just want the puppy to grab the toy and have fun with it. And if they do, that's great. But when I stop, what the puppy's gonna do, they might start biting at me and I just freeze. And as soon as they stop biting at me, then they get the toy back and we play again. All right, so how you play with a puppy is super important. They got we don't wanna hurt their neck. So when you play with a puppy, the goal is we want to get them tugging on a toy. So I'm gonna snake this along on the ground and get them to chase it. And if they don't chase it, I might actually hold them back a little bit and get them to, to create some anticipation for it because they can't get it because I'm holding them back and I let them go kind of like a spring, right? If you bring a spring in like that, it can blow up. But if, you just, if, you, if they're just kind of standing around, the spring is not engaged in any way. When they get tugging, important guys, the tendency, oh, there's good stuff over there, right, Paul? <laughs> the tendency for people is to tug up and down like this and the dog's head's going That is so bad for the neck, right? We want to get the dog's head turning side to side, not up and down. All right, so we're going to, we're going to change locations. We're going to go into the living room. I'm going to see if I can get Paul to play with me. We're just going to do a couple little things of play. So I'll take these all over there. Oh my goodness gracious. I'm going to take the cookies that I have and I'm going to leave them here because you're gonna create conflicting reinforcement. We know he loves my cookies. If I bring the cookies, they're in my little pouch here on my, on my sweater. If they were still there, he might play a little bit and then go, you got, you got something real good there. And then he might stop playing. So I want to not interfere with the drive to play with me. Okay, so I'll leave these here. We're gonna go for a little walk. I'll put on my um, mask a little bit first. And then we'll go over here. Now, boom, ba -doom, walking through my living room. There's another toy there. And I'm just going to, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna turn the... Down, boom the area I've got a little it's not completely confined but I've got a little bit of an area for Paul okay so you can put him on the ground and if you can just watch the camera for me Sam so hi mister hi 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 which one of these do you think is a really good thing which one of these is a really good thing well, I think you really like them all so I'm gonna put let's just play with this one because it crinkles this looks like a really good toy And then I'm going to pick him up. We 
want to stop him before he wants to stop. Coil that spring again. Now he's biting it. And that's it for play. That short. Okay. Okay, we, we had a little technical difficulty, but guess what? Nothing important happened. We were just ending the play and coming back over here. Okay, the final, the final thing I want to talk about, biting and intros, all right? So when we're playing, if your dog puppy happens to bite, you're just going to freeze. And if he keeps biting, you're going to yelp like another puppy. And when he stops, then the game can start again, all right? So uh, there's never a point. You can say, well, it really doesn't, he didn't bite me that hard. There's never a time when putting your mouth on your, my hand is okay. So anytime you do it, I'm going to freeze. I'm not going to keep talking to you. And that's one thing I want you to get. It's common, Mike, especially when you're on camera. When you're playing, I want you to start talking so that we can make it dramatic what's appropriate play and what isn't. So if I'm singing, I love to sing to my dog. And then you put your hands on me. And they take your mouth off. It's like clicking and not clicking. They get to understand the difference, okay? Now, let's talk introduction to, if I'm walking my puppy down the street, how, uh, how do I introduce him to other dogs? So the first answer is you don't. Because other dogs down the street, you don't know if they're friendly. Number one goal that we have for our puppies is we need to protect their confidence, okay? So how do... If you see somebody and, and, and I might uh, have my puppy sit and just feed them because we want the puppy to know dogs go by, you don't lunge at them. So that's the first lesson on leash for seeing other dogs. And then you might see somebody that you see all the time and go, hey, is your dog, does your dog like puppies? There's one of three answers they're going to give you. The first one is going to be no. And you know what to do. Keep away. The second answer that you're gonna get, they're going to give you is, I think so. That's the same as a no. You're going to keep away. The only answer you want is, oh, he loves puppies. If you get, oh, he loves puppies, then you're going to say, is it okay if my puppy meets your puppy? Can you ask your dog to lie down? All right? If you've got a great big Great Dane puppy and they can't get that puppy to lie down, then I wouldn't let a little dog like Paul meet that puppy. But, you know, because a down is, a, is a, a calm place for the puppy to first meet another dog. Now, if it's another puppy, that's fine. I've got my puppy seven months old. If you said, does your puppy love other puppy? I don't know. But we're not on the street. And so we can introduce them in a calm way. So how do we introduce other dogs or other puppies that you're not sure of the reaction? I like to do it with an X pen like I've got set up here or a crate. So one's in a crate. The other one can come sniffing. You give cookies to the one in the crate first because most dogs, when they're behind a barrier, are, are going to be more likely to uh, aggress. So we, want, it went, we want the dog in the crate or in the pen to know good things happen when this puppy comes near you. And then the puppy can get cookies, but most of the cookies go to the dog that's in the, in the pen. And then we're going, to, we're going to reverse the positioning. So we're going to let Paul have a little potty break, and then we're going to bring him in, and then we're going to introduce him to this which is my seven month old puppy to see how they, they get on. Uh, my guess is, is that they're going to be just fine, but I'm not gonna take the chance with this puppy because number one rule, protect the puppy's confidence, okay? So you go and take her, him out for a little potty break. And then I'm gonna see if I can read your comments. I don't know if I can. Uh, so if I can, and if there's any questions that you guys would like to cover, uh, I don't think I can. Uh, so I'm sorry. Can you jump on with your phone mm -hmm. and, and see if you can see if there's any questions? Okay. I am going to, we're going to, I'm going to set this up so that you guys can see what's going on here. You're going to see everything that happens. I'm going to reverse these lights. We have a little more light on the subject. And we're going to introduce them. So I have this 
out exterior barrier so that if I give my puppy a bone, the adult dogs can't loom by saying, oh my goodness, I would like that. You know, that's unfair to the puppy that's in this pen. So this is just a barrier to protect her. Now I'm going to clip down a little bit lower so she can't fit through and scare the puppy. Okay. And so I've got lots of cookies. Okay, so I would like you to, so the rest of the spring, fall over, put her open on the ground. And so, as he comes through, you're a little, yes, there you go. Nice, nice, there you go, search. There you go, Paul, there you go, there you go, mister. Yeah, there's some good treats for you. Good girl, good girl. There's some good treats for you. Here's some good ones. Yeah. So as I anticipated, I didn't think there would be a problem here. Has he met other puppies? In passing on the street, but I, we try to get him to sit and not yep, yep. interact. And um, how many vaccines has he had? His second round. Okay, good. All right, so he should be good to meet a well-vaccinated other puppy. Good. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to reverse this. We're going to put him in there and her out here. The difference is she's going to want to visit with you, so she might not pay much attention to him, but we'll see. So just pick him up. So we're just wanting to be safe. Is there another cookie there you see? All right. So I touched the, the crate door. She's going to go into an SIT. Good girl. I'm going to reward that good choice. Right. And then you can just put him, keep his leash on. So we're only going to keep him in there for a minute or two. So this is how we introduce this. I know, and I, I anticipated she would want to meet everybody. That's good. This is Paul. He's a nice baby. Is he a nice baby? Yeah, his name is Paul. Okay, so now I'm going to put her on a leash so that if by some fluke she wants to go at him, we can gather and, and protect him. So if you just put her, the leash that you guys brought her on in, just slip it over. Oh. She doesn't even have a collar on. This, I'll just do this. Here we go. Little. I don't put collars on my dogs in the in the house once they're past a certain age. Come here, little. Good. There we go. Okay. So she's got a leash on. I'm going to bring Paul out and let her come and visit. Good things happen when you come near the puppy. Spencer. Nice. Okay, come here, little. This. This. Come here. Can you lie down? No, I'm so sh rather than the puppy being afraid of her, she's a little leery of the puppy. Okay, so I'll just let him down. This. This. concerned about my cookies, which is a good thing. So he's not jumping on her head. If you have a puppy that's going to jump on another dog's head, that other dog may snap at them. Super good, little. Good. Good. Sit. Good. Good. <laughs> I just want to see the people. <laughs>
better right now, you don't push the issue. You allow, you want to build this confidence so that she learns that other puppies are fine, okay? Good. And he gets to learn that I can meet another puppy and um, I don't have to jump all over them because really good things are happening. Okay, Dance, come here, you can go back in your pen while we're wrapping up. Okay, you can call him. Huh? 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 So I wouldn't say come because you're poisoning the word come. I would only say come when you would bet me $100 he's going to do it. Okay. That's when you can add a word to it, all right? Okay. So we're going to make sure he does come to you. This, this, sir, come here. This, I think I called you. Right, come on, you don't have to meet him. You go in there. All right, so again, we're going to recoil the spring. I'm going to give you a good cookie. Yep. Okay, so you're not going to show it to him, but when he comes to you, you're going to reward him. Okay, ready? Mm -hmm. Call his name. Huh? Good boy. And take his collar. Good. All right, so always help that puppy to focus, recoil the spring, then say his name, and then that's how we're going to get our puppies to always come the first time we call them. All right. All right. All right. Okay, my hair with the mask. So a lot of things on this live. This is the first time ever I've done it live, but if you're a follower on my podcast, Shaped by Dog, you'll know I promised when we reached 10,000, I would go live. So we have 10,000 followers on YouTube. If you are just finding this live, subscribe to the channel because we're putting out great training videos every single week. I want to thank uh, Mike and Samantha and Paul. And maybe, maybe you guys want to come back and do it again sometime? Yeah, of course. All right. So there could be part two to Train Your Doodle. See you next time. If I can, there. <laughs>